Chicago Stock and Fresh Lakers really good. And here it is, your man Theo Butler. And welcome to a I know I really ain't did another issue of Black Panther. You know, with Shuddy and everything like that. My bad on that. Before we begin, like, share, subscribe. You like, leave a comment. If you don't like, leave a constructive comment. Why? Because if you know me, grow me, and sharing is indeed caring. So we're going to pick this episode back up. I think this is issue seven, starting the power arc. Shuddy, Black Panther, and everything like that. So y'all stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and wrap a taste on this. I'll be right back. Well, don't go. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Back, we back, and I don't know why, but this cover of Shooty as the Black Panther and the crosshairs of a rifle with the American flag behind her reeks of irony. I don't know what it is. Something about this, something about this, something about this image. I don't know. Anyway, considering what is currently going on with the Black Panther IP, there is way too much irony going on. Y'all, y'all ain't, ain't y'all I ain't, I ain't saying, I'm just saying. Anyway, we open up and get brought up to speed from the previous issues, and of course, we have our usual suspects. Reginald Hutton as the writer, Ken Lashley on the pencils, Paul Neary on the inks, Paul Mounts on the colors, and letters by VCs Corey Pettit. On page one, we see a wheelchair-bound T'Challa mourning the deaths of his mentor Zuri and his childhood best friend Wakabi. The fact that we will never get to know the character of T'Challa on the big screen, like we really don't know fleshed out his emotions. We, we don't have that, and that, that just bothers me. The fact that those who look like him don't care combined with the underlying mindset of those who plotted against the portrayal of the character and the reason behind it. Mm. <laughs> Nevertheless, that's another story for another day. Page two, we see Shorty speaking to her fellow Wakandans. She lets them know that whatever they saw her as before no longer applies. She is a Wakandan first and foremost and that she is not alone. From there, we shift to Wakanda news coverage where Shuri's accent, or can I say accent? Her ascent? You don't like that rise? Okay. Her rise of becoming Black Panther comes under question by a gentleman named Nadega. I'm going to say Nadega. Didn't Shuri just defend Wakanda, though, from Moreland? <laughs> mm. Even though she, even though she is defended by a gentleman, his name is Mtoka. I'm going to say it's Mtoka. Notice the shift in tone when it comes to Wakanda and how the nation feels about the royal family. It's changed in less than an issue. It's even hinted that the reason for this could be because Shuri is a woman. Now, now this me. This me. Now, ladies, I'm not a female. I'm not. But all this form of mansplaining that's going on, like, I, I, I want y'all to know. Men don't even like men explaining. We we don't. We don't. But what's interesting about this dialogue is that if the Black Panthers go all the way back to Bashinga, which has been since retconned to BC, Black Panther BC, we call him King Wakanda, then Panthers have either stepped down or died, allowing other members of the royal family to compete for the mantle of Black Panther. Right? Right. That said, Black Panther history tells us that should he is not the first female Black Panther. We know that Nahanda was a previous Black Panther. Not the only female Black Panther, but I can't even say she was the first one, but we know she predates Shuri. In essence, this country has been in this position before where, had, where there has been a change of leadership, sudden or not. As the debate continues, Aurora watches from afar as her husband rehabs from injuries. Notice I said injuries. I didn't say he was recovering from death. He's recovering from a near-death experience, but not death. Any questions? Cool. Next page, we find ourselves in the White House. And is, is that President Barack Obama sure he is meeting with? Any good outcome. Imagine that. The Clinton's region of Wakanda actually met the president. He even wishes T'Challa a speedy recovery. Crazy how some other folks only wish T'Challa a speedy death. I do. Hey, Nate. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Kevin. Y'all see how she was on her Panther guard? Sans the helmet? Like, she got on everything but the helmet. Nevertheless, she makes her exit. She's greeted by, as she makes her exit, she's greeted by Everett Ross, who's been asked to be her liaison during her continued stay in the States. And surely lets him know 
Her brother didn't put up on game. He didn't tell her exactly who Everett Ross is. And while he doesn't totally agree, he doesn't totally disagree either. <laughs> After entering the limo, Ross cuts to the chase and questions whether her visit has anything to do with who attacked the child. Now, we as the readers know who did it. But as of right now, no one else knows. And T'Challa ain't really telling nobody. Shorty tries to assure him that she is in America only on diplomatic mission as the new head of state. She and Ross chop it up. Chop it. She and Ross chop it up by playing word games with one another. Hey, Kevin. Even as we see a figure hovering above their vehicle, whoever this is reports in that their target has been acquired and they get the order to go hot with the weapons. Now, if y'all don't know what that means, that means go ahead and attack. You can go ahead and do what you got to do, handle your business. What we get is an attack on a princess regent by three men flying with jetpacks. From there, we see T'Challa struggling to walk a la Rhodey at the end of Captain America Civil War. He also falls as well. I mean, this is just like Captain, C Captain America Civil War. The only thing we, we don't get is Stan Lee coming up with the Tony Stank jump. That's the only thing we don't get. <laughs> what we do get, though, is his wife, Aurora, who is visibly concerned about her husband. She attempts to console him as he struggles to get up, telling him that it's too soon. He's too weak. Once again, irony, because I kind of didn't heard that when it comes to the recast the child movement. Too soon. Too weak. <laughs> My mind said it's kind of like the child is on this one. Go along with me. He reflects on him being blasted by doom. Reflecting on Kevin Feige making his whole statement about I about iconic when we know good and well, but never mind. He thinks to himself, "Say too weak, too weak." I ain't telepathic, but I'm pretty sure this is what T'Challa's mindset was. Too weak. You don't know who the hell I am. Too weak. Oh, you didn't try it. I I can show you better. Than I can tell you. Too weak. Oh, okay. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Too weak. All right. Bet game. Don't say less. Two weeks? All right. <laughs> yeah. He's going to show up there. We can tell him. Back to the scene of the attack, though. The main bad guy makes his makes his way towards Ross and demands to know where Shuddy is. And while she doesn't tell the bad guy where she is, because she don't make no sound, she definitely shows him by disabling his backpack and severely injuring him with one swipe of her claws. Do you know? Like, just think about that for a second. Like, she was going for his, yeah. Just think about what she was going to do that much damage. What she was aiming for. What she was trying to do. <laughs> Just think about that. So we see him. Buddy is down. Bloody. And his homeboys, they don't want none of the smoke. Like you see them, they're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> Why well, died down? Because I'm looking at this scene and it just reminds me. John Byrne fans, X-Men fans, um, Hellfire Club. Hellfire henchman. Yeah, y'all remember that whole scene? Yeah. This scene, it's died down because we ain't getting that much blood, but it's giving me that same vibe from the Hellfire Club. Anyway, the dude that Shooty took out initially after she didn't kick him in his leg, you gotta you gotta get a dude credit. He's dedicated to finishing his job. He is. What winds up happening? Y'all see it? I don't, I don't, if you need me to explain it to you, should have killed everybody that was there. <laughs> she didn't kill all three of them dudes. She had. She didn't, didn't care, didn't bat no eyelash. And she ain't there for like, oh, see if they dead. She know they dead. No, get everything off of them that we need. But before they're able to make the move to get everything that they need, the bodies are incinerated. Before they're able to get anything that they need, the bodies are incinerated. And the individual that incinerated the bodies remotely brags that they got all the information that they needed to get on this attack on Shorty. So whoever was behind this was really trying to see what was going on. They got the information that they need. Back at the Wakanda Embassy, Shorty is thanking the president for checking on her safety. She assures him that she is fine, given her best to he and to him and his family. He that sounds super proper. She's giving the best to him and his family. After the phone call, she's 
she properly turns her attention to going over whatever information they were able to gain from where the attack on her life took place. That's when she is told that they have a lead. Some of the specs have come back as being eerily similar to Wakandan tech used by the Wakandan Air Guard. The other tech, albeit old, is from Stark Industries. <sighs> y'all been rocking with me. I've been rocking with you. I done told y'all some stuff. Y'all done, 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 done seen some stuff. If I tell it to you, you either take it at face value or you go, you go, you go Google it. You go Google it, you be like, damn, that's what that is. So you know Riri Williams is showing up in Black Panther 2. She is. It's going to be some explosions going on in Black Panther 2. There are. This is the second story arc with Shooty. It's called Power. Shooty's going to be Black Panther in Black Panther 2, right? Yeah. So we're going to pull from the Power storyline while killing off T'Challa. So we're going to use some of the story, some of the storylines from this particular story arc to introduce Riri Williams while killing off T'Challa. Deadliest of the species, power, doom war. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. Anyway, as Shuri ponders the connection between the two, we move back to Wakanda. So, oh, by the way, y'all see this picture? Someone send me a Professor X hover chair so I can recreate this scene. I, I, I want to see how this works. Anyway, we see T'Challa saying he needs time to himself. Now, I don't know what Charles' chair can do, but clearly T'Challa's chair has no issues navigating any type of terrain, regardless of whether it's going uphill, downhill, sideways, up a mountain, down a mountain, around a mountain. His hover chair got it. <laughs> so... We see him enter what appears to be a simple hut as an elderly woman greets him. She tells him that they're expecting him. But who is they? I mean, we see the painting of the panther behind this woman, but who is they? Next page over, we start to get a glimpse of just exactly who they are. They are the women who are based off of the Hosi warriors, warriors from the Dahomey tribe. They are the adored ones. They are the Dora Milaje, and T'Challa simply states, Adored ones, we have work to do. What's going on? What's going on? We back, we back, we back. Everybody want to come out now because I'm doing a video. Anyway, so, <laughs> issue seven wrapped up. T'Challa, yes, he was injured. Wasn't dead. Can we stop saying that? Shuri is the Black Panther, right? Shuri is the Black Panther. We just seen her attack, and Shuri got a killer streak to her. Like, you see how she put hands on people? Like, Shuri don't care. Like, yeah, damn. And then we have the Dora Milaje at the end. This should be interesting. We're going to come back. Hopefully, I'm going to have issue eight to you before Sunday. On or before Sunday. Y'all come back and holler at me. I ain't saying it. I'm just saying. Peace.